if you're just tuning in, you, welcome, of course, to Ludo History. Uh, my name's Adam, as always, uh, your friendly neighborhood historian. Uh, we are about to hop into some Kingdom Come Deliverance. Uh, the goal here uh, is, you know, just hanging out and having a good time, exploring the game a little bit more, and seeing how my thoughts have changed on it since, you know, Pentiment came out. Uh, 2022 was an absolutely crazy year for historical games, so I'm super curious to how it's evolved uh, and how uh, my thoughts on the game has evolved since then. Um, if you are enjoying this, do make sure you say hello and hit that follow button to be notified for the wide variety of historical games content that we do. Also, also, super important announcement, remember if you are in New England and are planning on coming out to PAX East, uh, Thursday, 2.30pm, March 23rd, uh, I'm going to be presenting live at PAX uh, with my good friend OSP Blue, um, but we're going to try to record it and get it up afterwards for the folks who can't make it, but we're going to be talking about historical games on a broad level and why we actually do this, because, you know, it is an open question as why someone with uh, multiple graduate degrees in history would willingly play sometimes dubious historical games. So, you know, if you're in the area, do consider coming out, joining us for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, otherwise, of course, if you enjoy this uh, at any point, do make sure you uh, uh, also consider hitting that subscribe button. If you have Twitch Prime, you have Amazon Prime. Or if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. Let's put it that way. And uh, with one of those Twitch Prime subs, uh, you're able to subscribe every 30 days, completely free to one channel of your choice. And if you wanted to throw it this way, uh, that would be super duper appreciated. Now, what do you say we get into Kingdom Come Deliverance here, assuming I have set up the game audio correctly? That's an open question, isn't it? We'll find out real fast. Do we have to? Um... I have super not. All right. Uh, oh. Welp. That's fine. That's fine. Give me just a sec here. Let's try that again, eh? Okay. For real this time. Potentially, maybe. Yeah, there it is. I don't care about our intro. For anyone who's just who's not seen this game before or has followed in the last couple months since we played it, um, the game is set in 1403 in uh, rural ish Bohemia uh, around the area of Sazava, which is about 30 miles uh, southeast of Prague. And we play as um, Henry, who is theoretically an everyman, uh, definitely not the secret illegitimate son of the Duke of the area, we promise. He's also got negative four brain cells, uh, and we did emulate that perfectly in uh, our last, the last time we played this by uh, running around like an idiot. Why is there? Huh? Weird, weird achievement. Right, last time we played this, we were, like, trying to explore the mechanics of the game by running around like an absolute moron, uh, trying to see what bullshit the game lets us accomplish. The answer, as it turns out, was actually quite a lot, uh, though it rapidly breaks uh, if you are trying to do um, anything... Well, super duper interesting, to be honest. We also have hit a little bit of a wall in the main story, in that uh, the game expects you to ignore the main story. And if you don't do that, the main story rapidly gets too difficult for you to do. Huh. You know, I don't think I observed this last time. Hello, random ass, like, well, mid and pile plus bones. Ew. I mean, this is actually good, right? Uh, the idea that the community would have uh, a pit 
where they would throw all the bones and awful that they're not planning on using. Plus, you know, rotten hay, uh, food refuse, any of that stuff, right? That's actually true. I'm very suspicious of the um, convenient skull to market, but, you know, this is actually something super well attested in medieval towns, so. There's also not a but I kind of expect it to be closer to the butcher, though. Like, it is kind of just in the open here. What are you doing up at this it time like of day? The cat dragged in. Okay. I'd like to know... Uh-huh. So, how do you like it in that time? It's a big town with good strong walls, so I suppose we're safe here. And they took us in in our hour of need, but how much longer? They'll grow tired of us soon enough. Yep, that's probably true. What do you think about the Kumanska? Oh. They came to Hungary from God knows where, and now they... Well, folk tell awful stories about them. I hope I never see them again. That's all. Yep. God. Nick, free time for today, you had a conversation about how, um... English speakers mispronounce names of historical figures due to English spelling rules. You have two nickels. Uh, you know, fair. Why is this scene so dark? Because my immersion. No, like, literally, I can try to turn up the screen brightness, but, um... I don't even know if I can do... Yeah, no, I... I actually can't. That's hysterical. I don't think I can turn up the... Game brightness. Alright. Well, uh, we'll just have to wait till it's not, um, well, 2 in the morning. The figures were Julius Kaiser and Shingeth Khan, if you were wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we spell Julius Caesar, you know, English pronunciation, Julius Caesar, though that's not... Those are both perfectly rational mis... Uh, mispronunciations, and one of them, I almost argue, is no longer a mispronunciation, right? So, the fact that what in the Middle Ages, you know, J and I are interchangeable, so we see, it's typically word final, like you see the extended descender to make it a J, but regardless, uh, it's not inherently super weird um, that you see that, and then English spelling rules turn that from the semi yeah into the affricate J. And that's fine. Uh, but Caesar instead of Kaiser actually occurs before English. So that's something. Uh, it occurs, it's gonna occur in phases between the roughly um, 4th and 10th centuries, but uh, Late Latin does this thing where it palatalizes. So there's two simultaneous sound changes that happen. The first one is A-E and E merge. So instead of I and E, you just get E. So that's why British English, you'll see sometimes like, or, Who's and that? I'm talking. What? Show yourself. I'm literally standing in the what open. I'm talking. Stop it. Um, but yeah, uh, right, we get the late Latin, um, O, E, E, and A, E, all merge. So, right, you get something like, I don't know, um, right, punishment, like, a uh, punishment code being a penal code in English. In British English, it's actually spelled P-O-E-N-A-L, because that's how it is in Latin. In classical Latin, it's Poina, uh, for punishment. 
Stop. Jesus. Fine. If you're going to keep sighing at me, I'm just going to leave. Um. But at the same time, right, uh, there's a change where C in front of a front vowel. Uh, so in front of A, E, or E is going to change first to CH and then to S. And so that change, right, CH and S, is um, uh, funky and weird, but I don't blame English for following that rule, because Anglo-Norman French is follows the change, and so all the Latin borrowings that process through Anglo-Norman French follow the change. And so it's where German, you know, not having the change, borrows it directly from classical Latin, hence Kaiser. Um, English, according to totally well-behaved romance sound changes in the Middle Ages, should end up with Caesar, which is what we see. And so I hardly count that as a mispronunciation so much as just, you know, a pronunciation. The um, absolutely rubbish uh, attempts at anglicizing, uh, you know, what we typically pronounce as Genghis Khan, yeah, I got nothing. Uh, that's that's a long and complicated series of failures to, um, you know, correctly process um, Mongolian phonetics, and then even more garbage attempts at, um, like, borrowing in. What's really funny is that it... In English, you're able to identify that the palatalization of consonants before front vowels occurred before Genghis Khan was borrowed into English, right? It had to occur before the 14th century, because otherwise you would get the actually probably more accurate Genghis Khan, right? G, K and G also do that. The same thing about what you see in C, going from K to CH to S, also occurs with K and G. So it's why you have giraffe instead of giraffe. Also, I'm walking randomly. So you're able, uh, you're able to identify quite specifically, right? That's the order of how that works. Um, I don't even know where I'm. Oh, it is fully midnight. Okay. Also, GIF or GIF, exactly, right? Uh, the reason why a lot of people are going to say GIF, even though I'm a GIF person, um, the reason a lot of people say GIF is that it occurs after the palatalization, and all of the supposed parallels are ones that were borrowed into English before the palatalization, or borrowed in a palatalized form. And so, it is a sort of um, normalizing it's normalizing uh, a palatalized sound change across borrowings that don't normally have it. Uh, the same energy, by the way, is um, why moose doesn't become meese, even though you have, uh, right, mouse, mice, goose, geese. Moose is borrowed after the sound change that changes uh, the plural, muse for mouse into mice, or gas into geese, right? M since moose is, you know, not a native English word, elk is the correct word to refer to that. Uh, it's borrowing from Wampanoag? It's either Wampanoag or Algonquian, I don't remember which. Um, that occurs after the sound changes that create moose goose geese. And so you don't get moose meese because that's not how linguistics works. Uh, I need to figure out where the heck I'm going. Where is my map? Map? No. No. Map. I don't remember what these markers are. 
I don't remember anything that's happening. I remember we got, we got beat in a bunch of stuff. You're enjoying this conversation quite a bit? Good. That is the point. Hopefully. Maybe. Possibly. I don't remember. Uh, you clearly came in the middle of something when haven't I started going on historical phonetics. Uh, a throwaway comment that there's been some conversations today about uh, why, how English orthography messes up the spelling of Julius Caesar and Genghis Khan. That's about it. Um, you think it's Algonquin? Perfect. Hello, Pebbles. Alright, let's head over towards option, I guess, A. I don't know. Let's head... Wow, there's a lot of A. Let's head over to the red A, because that's the closest one. For the sake of doing something, let's head over to the red A. Yeah. Tangents are better when you catch up from the start. That's true. Uh, but also good fun. Oh yeah, speaking of Mr. Caesar, happy knife sharpening to everyone. Big day tomorrow. True. True. Gotta get those ca his the cake for his uh, definitely birthday, we promise. Um, that's the only reason we're getting knives. See, we've got one cake and a very large knife, and it's just to cut the cake. It's not- there's no stabbing anyone involved here. What do you mean? What? No. Who would do that? Stabbing Caesar. Like, come on. Well, uh, Pebbles. Pebbles. Oh no. Pebble. Pebbles, I may have gotten you stuck in a corner. Uh. I may have gotten me stuck in a corner. Well programmed game. Let me go through that again just for fun. This is fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> Henry's head is empty. True. You wonder, is your transliteration of Chingus more accurate or easier to interpret than... Probably. Right, the more recent uh, spelling in English I've seen for Chinggis Khan is C-H-I-N-G-G-I-S, which is definitely closer to the Mongolian. So, probably. On the other hand, you like the English pronunciation of some names just because they sound better? That's that's a base take right there. Right? Preferring... Preferring a spell it or pronunciations that are based in, like, hyper-rigorous uh, period phonology? Meh. Preferring options because they sound good? That's big brain right there. Looks like we actually went the wrong way, though. Uh, we want to head back down the hill to head over the bridge, to head back over a bridge, to head somewhere else to go to a shrine to then head over. Like, linguistic borrowings are so fun to me. Uh, I don't suppose I'm able to just kind of go somewhere, am I? No. Boo. They're gonna be- oh, I should put that- I should put that away. I ignore the fact that it's covered in blood. Henry! Henry, you moron! Why are you always forgetting to clean your weapon? Like, you think it wouldn't be difficult. Just- just clean off your weapon. But no. No. It's just still blood-soaked. For no reason. Just because. Harry thinks the rust would be a cool addition? Probably. You know, this... 
Given how many brain cells this boy has, uh, that does not surprise me one bit. So I will say, uh, right, even though I'm immediately wandering around completely lost, um, the thing this game still does incredibly is its environments, right? Like, its natural environments are incredibly well executed. And so this moment-to-moment -moment act of just... Huh. Neat. I don't remember how I opened the menu, but that's exciting. There it is. Horsemanship. Heavy duty pony, which lets me can carry more or faster, but carries less. Yeah. Oh wow, that's that's a lot faster. That's not a little bit faster, that's a lot faster. Uh... But yeah, right, like, there's a lot where this, the uh, natural environments in this game just, like, rule. The flora and fauna are exactly, like, right for the region, and it just, it looks and feels really good to walk through. A new codex entry. An execution place. Situated at hilltops, crossroads, and out of town as they were considered unclean. Yeah, okay, yeah. When and where is this game set? Uh, this game is set in Bohemia in 1403. So... Neither at that time, nor at that place. What's wrong with hilltops? Uh. Right, I, I a little bit don't agree with the idea. I don't happen to have an idea. I had a spade not that long ago. Um, don't worry about it. But yeah, right, I, I, I disagree with the interpretive aspects, the idea that those are like inherently like considered super unclean spaces. But I do agree with it insofar as that's, like, where things happen. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Y'all are fine. So many puppies. I'm just looking for a spade. Don't mind me. I'm looking for a spade. The fact that I ha I know I had a sp Are we grave robbing? Yes. You got a problem with that? You probably should. But yeah, um, it is set in the war between uh, Sigismund and Václav, uh, the children of uh, Emperor Charles the Fourth. I want to say Charles the Fourth. Um, over the Holy Roman Empire, etc. Put a door on your dang outhouse. Um, hello? Hello? Oh. There's not a spade I can just borrow? No? Dang. It's not grave robbing, it's just early archaeology. That's big brain thinking right there. But yeah, uh, the period kind of, right, oh no, let's actually look at the space here. 
Um, let's look at our map. Hey, we found an executioner's hill. There it is. Get the dead man's ring from Miller Peshek, who's, like, down here. Um, what's, what's here? I should see what's down there. Uh, what's over here, too? Kill the camp leader. That sounds like a good way for me to get killed. An accident happened on the road over there. It's Neuhoff up there. So that's just the edges of the map. We've already explored most of this. There's a good chunk up here that we have to explore yet. Uh, Ujitz has some stuff. Like unexplored, undiscovered thing, undiscovered thing. And then there's a bunch of stuff up here that we have yet to do. Like, we actually have a decent amount of space left to do. Uh, the star... Where, where's my thing? Quest giver. Indeed. Find the nightingales. Maybe we want to go over here, because this should be the monastery. But first, I would actually go into... Well, maybe there's someone with a shop in Ladech. Co? Hmm. That's a grindstone, that's a tanner. That's a tailor, that's baths, that's... A trader. Perfect. Let's fast travel. Henry's outfit on this, by the way, is also super good. Um, I wish we had that outfit more of the time, but I love I love that hood. It's very fun. Hooray! I suppose I got just like a random food pile over here, right? Any arbitrary food? Oh. Any... Any... Oh. Sorry. Excuse me. Acknowledge my presence, please. Any arbitrary food? Yeah! Arbitrary food. Does English still translate the names of foreign royalty? Sometimes. Sometimes. Um... Like, are we translating, um... I guess it depends on how foreign they perceive it gets perceived as, right? So, like, are we going to translate, uh, Louis or Ludwig to, uh, Louis? Not, not typically. Okay, I need to talk to the trader here, see if I can get a spade. Are you the trader? You're the baker. Hello. God be with you. Uh huh. God be with you too. Um, buying. Those are silly. Oh, all of my stuff is kind of rubbish. Um. All right, all right. Price 108. Price 207. Uh, the entire jacket is just better, isn't it? Like, why is this one twice as expensive for when uh, this, the ordinary entire jacket is just better? Spade! We'll add that to our basket. Uh, then we'll get the quilted brown. Nope. We'll get an ordinary charge jacket. Then we'll see if we can sell anything. Maybe we'll sell the we'll fly Igrick. Just saying. Surely you want the fly Igrick, right? Surely. Condition 0%. Helpful. Oh dear.
Basket. Ah well, haggle. I'd like to discuss the price. Hi. Since it's you. Well, a little more and we'll call it a deal. I knew we'd come to an arrangement. There we go. Success. We saved five five gold, which is so impressive. We promise. God. Um, in the Shanty Holloway drill, Louis sometimes becomes Lewis, but that song always also contorts the pronunciation of many words. Yeah. That's not surprising. Uh, if you're on a council with your court, do you talk about the neighbor country with translate names? No clue, to be honest. Um, it's... One of the problems of trying to answer questions like that um, with in prehistory, or in, I guess in pre-modern history, I should say, um, is that it's like really not clear uh, a lot of the time what the like moment-to-moment -moment, uh, relationship um, or the moment-to-moment -moment acts of communication and diplomacy. Right, it's not clear how they work. Because there's, there's definitely times where that uh, we have letters that suggest pronunciation or other documentation. But there's also lots and lots of times where, like, translators don't get mentioned, even though they almost certainly existed. Um, where linguistic differences don't seem to be a problem despite no particular education and so it's like there's a fair amount of just stuff happens and it works and that's weird that's broadly speaking very strange and so we are kind of left in the dark as to you know whether when i don't know uh when Mary Queen of Scots is talking about the King of France, is she... How is she going to actually describe her? What language will would she use in her court to uh, talk to him? Or talk about him? Can I not start digging? I have a spade. Wasn't Latin like the lingua franca, at least for your own ability? Um, sometimes, yeah. But not everyone knew how to speak Latin, alright? Unfortunate. Well, it's easy to assume, oh yeah, just everyone spoke Latin. And that answers that question, and everything's fine. Uh, that's not actually a safe assumption to be making. It turns out there's lots of cases where they uh, did not, in fact, speak Latin. So, right, but definitely, so it depends on really who you're talking about. Is the grave aligned east-west? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, but yeah, right? Every time someone talks about Charlemagne, uh, you thought someone missed something uh, instead of connecting the dots to Carl de Grossa. I mean, it gets translated because it's easier, right? Um, but talking about, no, no, big chop. My horse does not currently have a spade. I'm just not allowed to dig for no reason. Probably because it's too, it's too visible. Actually, let's check on that. Is it just because I'm too visible? Uh, but yeah. Back in the day, an average blacksmith made five marks a year, according to... But do you know what time period that is, uh, Leihenhardt? <whistles> oh. That one. Take it, take it, take it. 
We're just gonna hang out for literally 11 hours. Um, because, yeah, um... Well, Jan Kramer uh, did some looking for me for this game, and uh, pretzels are cost a week's worth of wages. Definitely one of the places where this game does not hold up um, is uh, in its economy, because, yeah. Nope, it just doesn't want me to dig up this interesting site. Darn it, Pebbles. In that case, we shall just away for a mischief. There's mayhem to do, getting stuck on things. Um, I'm not able to equip it. Fuck, 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 fucks. Spade. My options are move to horse, drop, or item info. That's a quest for Lady Grave. Oh. So I'll be able to dig it at the specified time. But my freedom of choice or something or other that I don't actually care about. How else am I supposed to- okay. Hang on. Just hang out for 11 hours reminds me if I can get arrested for loitering in Daggerfall. No, I'm not next to the Executioner. I'm in a completely different location. Oh, the one next to the Executioner I can dig up, but I didn't have a spade. So I went and bought a spade and I went in a completely different quest direction. You believe it's meant to be around the 16th century. Or around the 15th century. Yeah, that, that, that sounds about right. That sounds like it's... Since they're using marks instead of, uh, well, interesting. I, I wonder when the Deutsche Mark was introduced. I wonder if we can find that out. Deutsche. Uh... I suppose I should not mark it as Deutsche Mark because that actually specifies that it's 20th century. Um, okay. Uh, gotcha. So it's just it's just a wait. Um, so it's. Irritatingly though, right? Because that's not. Yeah, as an accounting unit, it's clearly old, but right, the standard unit uh, is the Groschen in the Middle Ages. So I'm curious if there's um, a comment here. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Groschen in the 13th century. Uh huh. Uh huh. Thank you. Oh, okay, that's later, but still, that's still helpful. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not finding a ton of stuff here on, like, medieval... Medieval marks, um, but it's a more valuable coin, right? Uh, basically, right, a mark is a much more expensive coin, probably out of, as like a heavy silver coin or a gold coin, where the Groschen is a silver coin. So definitely the more ex, um, I see that Henry has an owl's neck. I was like, why the why the heck is there like a tree branch? But no, he's just turning his, he's just like twisting two hundred or 
I guess like 110 degrees over his shoulder uh, to look at his own bow. And over here, we are on this side of the river. We do need to go up. Dang it. I need to backtrack. Or at least find the road again. Go. Up. Come on, Pebbles. I believe in you. Come on, Pebbles. You heard the about Pench is about. No, right now we are currently fucked off into the forest. Not a single mention of a wench to you in this trip until now. Discovered! Sasa Woods. Oh good. We're getting into the right area. Oops. I got an achievement for a new star. Oh well. I wouldn't mind if I did, actually. They apparently implemented achievements. And the achievement I just got is super yikes, is, um, anoretic. I don't like the game rewarding us with achievements for, um, you know, forgetting to eat. Yeah, so that's a part of the game that does not hold up well. I am bad at my controls. Uh, I have completely turned myself around, too. But yeah. Um, the, right, especially after this latest slate of games where there's been a lot of, like, quite a few games with, like, really interesting portrayals of diversity and obviously Pentiment in particular having a really good uh at least good enough to work with understanding of historical disability and the importance of representing people with uh both physical disabilities and uh neurodivergences Right, the importance of representing those people and actually, like, making them fleshed out, like, delightful people instead of a thing you can do to create an achievement. Uh, yeah. Instead, in this game, um, disability is relegated to achievements. Hey look, there's a bunch of stuff just across the river over there. Yeah. Exactly. Unfortunately, right, that's a space that only very, very recently have historical games actually started, like, paying more attention to. Like, as another good example, you can compare Crusader Kings 2 and Crusader Kings 3. Like, Crusader Kings 2 definitely has representation of historical uh, disability, but I would definitely argue um, that also advanced apologies for the munching sounds. Uh, I would definitely observe that um, mod Crusader Kings 3 is better about that and has a more interesting uh, understanding of what what numbers can be affected by uh, ability and disability and the ways in which those are not I don't know the ways in which those can intersect in more nuanced ways than just I guess, universalized, this is a minus two to intelligence. Rather, this is a minus two to X stat, except that in certain religious contexts, this might be interpreted differently and have different effects, or uh, with different cultural focuses, it might interact more complexly. So, just, right, the ability 
to make it less universal, uh, and influenced by more things, is to me definitely an improvement. Now, I believe we need to head along the coast here, and then we can d cut through the woods and end up in Sazava. So I actually want to go north. Okay. Yeah, we've come a long way from video game um, madness equals enemies and also being in the dark too long equals going insane. Well, oh. yes, but also no. Uh, some games have gotten better about that. I wouldn't say the entire games industry has gotten better at that, but there's definitely some games that have gotten better about that. Pebbles goes zoom. We made Pebbles a racehorse, Magistrissa. Pebbles goes. Pebbles has gone like twice as fast. Which is. ow. Great, except for when I walk into trees. You discovered Sasa. Thank god. Sazava was a settlement on the left bank of the Sazava River, opposite the monastery. For over 100 years, the town was the property of the Benedictine Monastery, centered around the Church of Saint Martin. Uh. Oh. Uh, Svata Martin, along the road to Prague and Kozhin. During the Hussite Wars, the monasteries and its surroundings fell into the hands of the Hussites, while which time the preacher gave sermons in the Czech language. Building work ceased from then until the mid 17th century, but the monasteries were flat. That's not. That's not. I don't think that's true. Now, hold up a bit. I'll be honest, I don't think that's a true sense, right? I think there's probably very little new foundation work between the 15th and 17th centuries, but the idea that there's no new construction in the town super doesn't sound right to me. Like, that sounds goofy to other people too, right? Can horses swim? Not well. I believe they can, but not well. Ooh, a weaponsmith. Hello. I would love to wash up and go talk to the weaponsmiths. Not that I think I can afford anything, but you know. Maybe I can- oh. I don't want to trespass, I just want to talk to- oh, you're over here. Swordsmith Fink. God be with you. Any chance of some work? Well. Come to think, there is one rather delicate matter to attend to. A while ago, a holy man came by here. Mm -hmm. He said he'd come from the Holy Land, and he was selling various relics he'd collected on his travels to pay his way. Okay. Well, I heard he had some fragments of a sacred sword that once belonged to the fabled Czech Queen of Sheba. But by the time he reached me, he had no pieces left of the sword. All he had was some dubious wares, splinters from our Lord's cross, thorns from the crown, nothing of interest to me. And where did the pieces of the sword go? He sold them off to swordsmiths and blacksmiths hereabouts. They just keep them lying around at home for good luck. If I had them, I'd forge them back into a sword. Yeah. Can you even imagine what power it would command? If you could get me all the pieces of the sword, I'd be paid very handsomely. Was the Queen of Sheba really a Czech queen? Are you sure the Queen of Sheba's a Czech queen? Who else would she be? Have you not heard of her? Our some priest. She's in the Bible. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright. 
Isn't it a bit strange that some pilgrim would have something so valuable? Are you suggesting he might have been lying? Well, people aren't to be trusted, but this is nothing to joke about. God would smite him in a flash if he made light of holy relics that way. Where can I find the bags? Like I said, the smith hereabouts bought them from us. They say the largest piece is with the Raphael swordsmith. The bastard probably won't work a cell. Have we discussed the views of the devs of this game? Our RTS Lightning, um, if you look in the about section of the stream, there's uh, there's a link to my YouTube where all the VODs go. Um, there is an episode zero uh, in the playlist for Kingdom Deliverance that is just about that. Um, because, yeah, it's worth acknowledging, you know, six months on, um, into the, or after almost six months away from the game, right, the, the stances of the devs, or at least of the director of this game, uh, Daniel Vavra, are things that I strenuously disagree with. Um, because, yeah, they're rubbish. Uh, and you can't discuss the history in the game without acknowledging that, and the uh, xenophobic, uh, hypernationalistic uh, stances that he has, that, despite his denials, definitely make their way into this game. Um, and relatedly, you know, the uh, extremely bizarre approach to historical accuracy, which is namely, if we can't find actual evidence for it, we won't include it, um, apart from all the things that we don't have evidence for, but we include it anyway. But using that as a cudgel to, you know, not include any um, Jewish characters, to not include any characters of color, to not really include any North African characters, to, you know, basically have an extremely, extremely boring, firstly, and secondly, a historical understanding of how far people moved in this period. Yeah. What kind of power did this sword have? What do you think? It brought his bearer good lucky. As family. swords do. And protection. As swords do. I'm in. Sound very now. I'll ask them and see what I can do. Actual question. You'll see you won't regret it. I'll pay you well. Ah, uh, yeah. Exactly. Right, they go. Now, what's the... Oh, game saved. Thank you. Can I repair this for a reasonable amount of money? I pay 8.3. Can't repair that bad. What do you mean? It's like barely damaged. Jerk. Fine. Let's have a word about the price. Um. Naturally. But yeah, no, Magistrate, the, the approach the Daniel Vavra has said is actually, uh. Since it's you. I'd almost shake on that. Almost. Mm-hmm. 55, 54. See now, I knew we had um, uh, the The approach to actually take it that Vavra has said is, yeah, there were, there were Jewish populations in in Prague, it, but this isn't Prague. This is Sazava, which is a whole 30 miles away. And definitely no one traveled. And therefore we don't need to uh, represent them. Yeah. No, uh, that is the level of goofiness that we're talking. Um, not outright denial, but also super weirdness. Anyway, there was an interesting question here um, that I am curious about as well. Queen of Sheba met evil. Hmm... Let's see what I can get. Um, let's see if I can find... Uh, so, we're going to click over here. And... Uh, right, what we can see is that there's some diversity, right? This is a tapestry, it looks like probably from the... Yeah, a little bit after this period, 
So you get some uh, attachment of the Queen of Sheba here. But in a different example, we'll see if it shows up here. Uh, in the Speculum Humanae Salvationis from 1430, King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Uh, King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. From Brandeis University. Uh, illustration of the Queen of Sheba from Conrad Caesar's Bellafortis, a military treatise from the Holy Roman Empire, circa 1405. So, right, though. Well, no Brandeis. So, you know, um, the Bible says nothing, uh, but, uh, do, 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 yeah, says the Solomon had treatment of both humans and animals, and one day as, uh, he reviewed his army, he saw that a hopua, a type of bird, was missing, uh, his bird came back and said, in this place where they worship the sun and the ruler is a woman, uh, i.e. Ethiopia. Um, Josephus says that she ruled over Ethiopia and Egypt. Um, Oregon of Alexandria says that uh, Queen of Sheba was beloved uh, in the Song of Songs, in, his com in Oregon's commentary on the Vulgate, or, well, uh -huh. I guess it's not really the Vulgate because Saint Jerome hasn't codified it yet, but uh, you know, in the in the Bible, and then in the Solomonic Dynasty of Ethiopia, which is super duper important um, in the cultural imagination of late medieval Europe. Ethiopia is actually super duper important and is a diplomatic powerhouse in the 14th and 15th centuries. Totally understated, but Verena Krebs has done really cool work recently on Ethiopia and its relations with late medieval Europe. Turns out, diplomatic powerhouse. And the Solomonic royal dynasty of Ethiopia specifically traces its lineage back to the Queen of Sheba, uh, thereby super codifying that the uh, Queen of Sheba is black. And so in the 15th century, not universally, but presently, you get depictions of the Queen, Queen of Sheba as black. Which makes... I'm, I am curious. See if we have anything of this. Queen of Sheba, check. I am curious to see if there's any mention of this or if this is just making stuff up. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. They're making stuff up. Um, no. Is that an impossible folk belief? No, of course not. Uh, right, the idea that someone might think of it, uh, the, uh, there might be a community that thinks, oh yeah, the Queen of Sheba is from here. Right? F from us. Whatever. Uh, is by no means impossible, right? Uh, people claim that uh, biblical or saintly figures either visited or were from uh, their community all the time in the Middle Ages and early modernity. But, this is a case where we have a lot of evidence that the most broad understanding of the Queen of Sheba is that she was from Ethiopia in this period. And are we getting that in this game? No. No. Instead, we're getting a probably invented folk belief, uh, so not something that's, you know, uh, historically attested, something that just kind of exists, and off we go. But yeah, another example coming straight out of Pentiment is, of course, the idea that St. Mauritius, a uh, Roman African um, legion commander who converted to Christianity, supposedly, uh, is also cl uh, super popular in Switzerland. Uh, and then from there, spreading throughout the Holy Roman Empire. So, you know, there's that. But yeah, there's also a history of attributing Queen's Regnant to countries south of Egypt. So the Kandake of Nubia, whose eunuch is baptized by St. Philip the Deacon. 
Exactly. My, the, there is the certainly there's a tradition of making you know queens regnant from somewhere else because that's a bit that's a bit of a funky thing. Not an unattested thing in medieval Europe, but a funky thing, and a funky thing should be from not here. So yeah. Man, sure, so we just look, we just mentioned that. It's in Oregon's commentary on the Song of Songs. Oh, hey. You're actually doing. Why did you just, like, what stop you? you doing I was about to ask you the same question, sir, because you are dressed extremely fancily for the work you were just. Sir, stop talking to me. I want to uh, stare at you weirdly, and then stare at the work you were just abandoned, and then stare at you weirdly. Um. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? You were dressed way too fancily for um, stripping the bark from. Are you about to follow me? I want to stand weirdly. Who's following who? Now. Noble man trying out peasant life, early early hipster. True. True. Right, well, his outfit isn't super duper fancy. Uh, right, there's way fancier possible. Uh, he doesn't have, he's got awfully tight fitting stuff. Uh, I'd expect another layer that's a bit looser. But still, that's brocaded. That's brocaded, which means that that's probably silk. Right, that could be, that could be silk. Um, in which case, he's certainly certainly a burger, right? Definitely what would now be upper middle class, uh, if not actively pretty wealthy. See also his tiny hat and feather. And here he was using a period proper thing to strip bark from a tree in order to use it for construction. That's... This part is fine. This part is fine. The two occurring at the same time is not fine. Anything else? Anything else? Yes, there is anything else. The anything else is that you should be, like, I don't know, at mass or in town or doing something other than manual labor that's going to make you covered in sweat and muck and sawdust. I want that tunic though. Well, yeah, me too. That's neither here nor there though. The point is, uh, like, I'd expect someone to be wearing linen, like rough linen, or just going about shirtless doing this labor. Like, that's... Both of those, to me, uh, feel much more akin to this sort of manual town labor than whatever this guy is doing. And that sums up this game really well, doesn't it? Right? Uh, people and jobs don't seem to really exist in context. Right? People do stuff. Are you going to go back and continue doing that work? Yeah. Right? You have people and the people are doing stuff but the stuff was the dress code for church just nice clothes well there's the green feels weird uh, the green doesn't really strike me as weird um right going about town right in the 15th 16th centuries we see a lot of like really bright colors in col illuminated art even scenes of the of like biblical events so actually, let me let me pull up an example for you. Uh, something I'm working with for other projects um, that is from later. This is from later, so don't get too it don't get too excited about this. Um, but also get super excited about this because it's from everyone's favorite art artist from Nuremberg. Let's see if I can get it like a really good one. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, let's pull that here. Go minimize, minimize this one here. 
Okay. Well, that took a, that took a hot second, but uh, we got there in the end. Boom. So, this is a scene from Albrecht Dürer's Apocalypsis, which a super rare version of it that's actually been colored, um, and elaborately colored. I'm doing work with this for another project, but that'll turn into a video on the channel eventually. Um, the angel is wearing green. Yes, it looks a bit more like rubbish brown, but this is green. This is a pigment known as verdigris. It's a copper pigment, so it's discolored. Um, several of the kings are wearing green. God is wearing purple, which is fancy, and Christ is wearing scarlet and blue. So, I mean, right, well, this is not a church scene per se, um, I think it is at least illustrative uh, that, right, in a biblical scene, um, the idea of what are the fancy colors include multiple types of green, like those two are not the same pigment, uh, as well as bright reds, bright blues, etc. God, that's beautiful. It's Albrecht Durer. Like, the man, the man, I'm almost mad that the man is exactly as cool as all the art historians say he is. But right, so, while green is to us probably a bit weird, um, in that, you know, modern fashion hates color, uh, I don't think in the period that it would be perceived of as, like, super bizarre. Oh, fuck's sake. I know you're tired. Hmm. Like, don't just be cool about it. That, JCDC, that sounds like Protestantism. That sounds like a super Protestant thing to say, that you should have mostly dark, dark colors uh, as a show of humility. That sounds like not at all a... Uh... Jesus Christ be praised. Indeed. Are there any problems around here? Aren't that sounds like not at all a medieval Catholic thing. That sounds like a like 19th century Protestant one. You're from Scalis, ain't you? You must know Fritz and Matthew. Them fellows need to know They're them. alive. They've been making all right, Leon Hart. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you for hanging out. Your own Scalis folk need the most help. There's some of them at the monastery. Talk to your hanker a few times. She's working her fingers to the bone taking care of the injured ones there. I'm sure she'd welcome some good Samaritan who'd lighten her load. And that's not all. There was one troublemaker around here not long ago. We dealt with him. He was selling some relics to uh. Caractus. But he was nothing but worthless trinkets. The villagers sent the bloody swindler packing so fast he couldn't see his heels with dust. All the way to Ledechko, I believe. I reckon he won't last long there either. That's all I can think of. Amazing. That's a lot of options. Now, I need to get a nap. Can I buy a nap? Can I just buy... Can I buy a nap? Or borrow someone's bed? Or literally anything? Maybe I'll just quick fast travel home. Because I can just fast travel one way, fast travel the other way, and then... Literally, because this is getting... This is going to be super frustrating if I don't. And it should be almost nighttime by the time I get over there. What colors would be most available to peasants of this era for clothes? Um... is expensive, yeah. Dang it. I was afraid of that. And I'm dead. 
I appreciate that the game doesn't let me. Yep. Will come and die. Um, yeah. Let's quickly mention that. Uh, what come and what colors will be most available to peasants in this area for clothes? Yellows. Yellows are going to be super easy. Um, reds. Um, probably. Let's see. Yellows, reds. Uh, that's probably the most too common because uh, you can get some blues. You mentioned woes. Um, but yeah, red comes out of madder or Brazil wood. Uh. Both of which are organic dyes that are relatively cheap and common in the period. Uh, yellow you can get out of uh, buckthorn, I want to say. Uh, it's buckthorn or welt, uh, which is t um, dyer's wheat. So those are definitely the two most common. You can produce then oranges and some greens by mixing those. Um, and if you're like being super fancy, uh, you obviously you can also get like earth tones. Um, while black is right, good black is expensive. Like a darker brown uh, out of on a lamp black or something, not that hard to make. Or using like a charcoal based dye to get you like a dark gray or a brown, dark brown, um, would be options available. So I'd expect those right, yellow and red as your two base colors, um, blue as slightly rarer. And then combinations of those with occasional accents of either brown, uh, browns, more purpley options, or, uh, yeah, something like that. Um, exactly, right, you can, uh, charcoal's other problems that tends to wash out super easily, and obviously undyed, right, the natural color of, like, grays, the grays of natural linen, uh, or wool, would be also totally valid options. Or... Yeah, you could use oak gall, uh, oak gall, um, walnut based inks, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, um, on our we die train, we're actually going to quickly take a brief ad break. Um, we take ads, ad breaks roughly every hour now, uh, both so I can get up and stretch. Uh, everyone else should do the same. Self care is super important. Um, it, but yeah, uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, uh, reloading the game to keep exploring. Uh, unsurprisingly, uh, my attempt to just walk home didn't work. Uh, Poland and Southern Europe with these Carmen Insects for a lasting rip, that's a much more expensive. Also, Carmen Insects are like super rare. Uh, the primary place where you're getting Carmen Insects from Southern Europe is you're importing them from the, uh, from the Indian Ocean trade routes. Because, yes, there are some in Southern Europe, but the vast majority are actually probably coming from India. So, certainly by the 16th century, that's the case. Um, so, yeah, I would not say that those are like a peasant available option. I'd say that's a burger or more expensive. Anyway, yeah, we'll be back in just a minute. Let me put give you... Uh, you've got some audio from the game, so we'll leave it with that. And uh, let me give you an ad break. Um... And then we'll be back in just a couple of moments. All right. See you soon. I am still muted. Thank you. Uh, I'm great. I'm a professional at this, aren't I? Uh, welcome back, everyone. I see we're all still talking about um, dyes and like fabric dyes and uh, like pigments, right? Paper pigments, which is what I've been working with recently, are all largely the same stuff. Um, there's a late 14th century Italian treatise by, I think it's Cernino Cernini, uh, which is, you know, just a wild name. Um, but that is, that goes through a bunch of stuff about, um, like, pigments for painting and what's all available in his home markets. Uh, that's super useful, and a lot of that stuff is going to apply to fashion as well. Um, yeah, so... As people are noting, right, the problem is not making the color, the problem is making the color last for a long time. For fabric, right, um, the fabric wears out anyway, you wash it out and then you're going to pulp it into paper. 
uh, especially for linen or cotton fabrics. Um, but when, when the thing wears out, you just pulp it, sell it to the rag merchant, um, and the rag merchants will sell it to the paper makers, and the paper mills are going to pulp it and then just make it into paper to resell it to the bookbinders, which is a whole sequence. So the dye doesn't necessarily have to last super long. For books, you kind of want the pigments to last longer. Um, and so they have a problem, right, uh, where a lot of the mineral dyes actually are going to be the organic dyes will bleed out wash out and the mineral dyes will eventually react uh in ways that mean that they fail uh so lead is actually one of the most stable dyes you can get right um that doesn't work so much for fabric because lead white doesn't work as well for fabric but if you uh just roast lead until it's white you can make make it white and then if you roast lead again you make it red or reddish and that's actually a really stable dye uh for painting and other pigmentation that's not going to seep into dyes or into fabric super well so that's not going to be super useful there but it is helpful anyway welcome back everyone uh if you're just tuning in my name's adam we're playing some kingdom deliverance and i'm continuing to be not very good at it uh but yeah, uh, we also are talking history, you know, seeing what the state of it is, and uh, hanging out. So, if you've been enjoying this, do make sure you drop a follow over there, uh, and consider subscribing to help support the channel more. What else um, is happening? Oh yeah, by the way, something I haven't mentioned yet. Um, we're going to be getting a couple new emotes. I've already put in one of them. Uh, so if you check the emote list, there's going to be just an absolute chad uh, hanging out for you all to enjoy. Look at that man. That man has a chin that could cut glass. Uh, we're also going to be getting another one, uh, courtesy of Velop, uh as our newest $10 patron. If you want to turn your favorite medieval or early modern art into uh, emotes on Twitch uh, to spam everywhere, remember you can head over to patreon.com slash history and for just $10 a month uh, you'd be able to select your own options. Uh, who is he? Why is that not working the way it's supposed to? Hmm, well, please hold. Um, the... Oh, because I'm on the wrong one. That would be why. Uh, there, the, there it is. Look at them. Marginalia moment. Spam, spam the chat. Uh, he is from a 16th century uh, manuscript, and he's just a cool guy. He, he's an early 16th century uh, bit of hand illumination. So we just get, we just get a cool guy. He's like attached to an aggressively fancy S, uh, but we trimmed up most of that for the sake of the emote. But yeah, we'll be getting another one. Uh, looks like probably a uh, high medieval siren that's going meh at people. So get excited for that. All right. Well, this has been our marginalia moment. So congratulations. For that should. Why did I not turn on? Email. Email. Well, go away. There we go. Um, this has been our marginalia moment. Thank you for redeeming that. Um, anyway, as we load back into the thing, we have another question uh, asking about what the job makeup actually looks like in this period. Um, so the vast majority of people are going to be doing like subsistence farmers, right? That should be the pretty much the largest. A uh, group of people. And uh, that shouldn't really surprise anyone, because, yeah, uh, of course they're the largest group of people. They're make the ones making the food. Uh, the medieval economy is largely subsistence farming, right? There isn't a ton of, like, ultra long distance food exports. A lot of this, there's some. Don't get me wrong, there's some. It's definitely possible, especially in spices. Um, oranges could be exported long distances uh, and other things that are relatively stable. Um, but a lot of, you know, your basic foodstuffs, like wheat, rye, those are all going to exist locally and exist in primarily local markets. So, and there's a vast industry, right, of most people are probably involved in the growing of that food. That being said, right, 
you're gonna have your millers, you're gonna have your bakers, you're gonna uh, have your sellers, you're gonna have people, um, carpenters, uh, traveling salesmen, people running around picking up all the stuff no one else wants, uh, known as like ragmen or chapbook sellers. Uh, you're gonna have semi-itinerant merchant routes, you're gonna have fully itinerant merchant routes, uh, you're going to have industries of hospitality for pilgrims uh, popping up. There's just a lot of stuff around. Um, let's talk to you again, yeah? Jesus so, Christ be praised. all of that is um, relevant jobs, but a lot of this labor, right, like the work of trimming away... Um, yep, yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh -huh. Thanks. Good luck to you. That should give me more triggers. Um so yeah. Uh the Let's see, let's keep thinking about uh, more stuff, right, or, yeah, for the guy that we specifically saw, right, the guy involved in making, right, like, trimming away wood, that, I would not expect that to be, like, a, someone's full-time job. I'd expect that that guy, the person doing that work, to be a peasant, that that's just something that needs doing. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I guess, miscellaneous work that goes into uh, peasantry and the related food growing. Uh... That's a grocer. I'm looking for the inn. I just need a spot to sleep. And so, you know, a lot of, you know, the labor of weaving, uh, making clothes and then cleaning them is just work done in the household. That's not work that is, has, I don't know, a great attachment uh, to a specific industry. Like, a laundromat is not a thing, it's just often female labor is going to be involved, at all levels of society, is going to be involved in making and cleaning textiles. And same thing with, uh, you know, wood um, harvesting and production, right, picking up sticks, peasants just do that. If you're cleaning up stuff uh, to do repairs on houses, the peasants just do that. Um, that's part of the kind of perpetual job of being a peasant. There are scribes here, and that's cool. Um, exactly, right? In urban, in urban places, right, you would definitely have more specialization in there. Ooh, Melusina. On St. Václav. I don't think I have enough... Um... Well, I'm tired, so I'm not... Huh. These are a lot of... Christiania, so the more remains of St. Václav. Uh, medical remedy. These would not... These would sometimes be independently circulating texts, like uh, Melusina is an uh, independently circulating text. Uh, the fish gal, exactly. Um, the lives of St. Václav and St. Adelbert uh, are definitely going to be regular ones. Um, but something like about Procopius and the founding of the monastery, probably just part of a larger chronicle tradition. Um, this would be probably in a geographic miscellany. Um, this is coming out of chronicles. These folk legends are hard to say. Uh, the rule of St. Benedict uh, circulates as a single unit, not in multiple units. Um, so there's this would be part of a medical miscellany. So they're, they're doing some weird stuff in how they're splitting up books. Uh, what work would be more communal? What would be done just for your household? Uh, largely, I think it makes more sense to see basically everything as communal. Uh, there's definitely a right sometimes. Oh. Right, I need this, I'll just go grab it real quick. Um, but for larger scale projects, the expectation seems to largely be that people are going to be uh, 
largely working together. Uh, and so, especially post-disaster, what I'm not hating. What the hell are you talking about? How cool would it be if the inventory books would link to real digitized versions of those books? That would rule. That would be a pain in the ass to license, but that would be cool. Well, yeah, I guess... Right, what I'd, what I'd really love is if the books had just, uh, like, if they just licensed digitized images. Um, so you don't have to, like, load up a browser window. You don't need an internet connection to do all that. But they would just include a historical manuscript with that book. Unfortunately, we are currently illiterate, so... Oof. Now, where's the inn? I'm extremely tired. I will love an inn. Well, this is a trader. Maybe we'll just eat, eat dubious... Whatever that dubious stuff is. That's a butcher. Do you have a pit nearby? Now here's a fun question. There's the yard where the animals would, would keep. Now where are you dumping your waste? Because we saw one of those over by Rate uh, and the Rate Mill. The question is, is there one near, actually nearby the butcher? Hmm. Yeah, uh, completely understandable, Grand Chicken Lord. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff is kind of guesswork at best, because uh, none of the people are actually concerned with really detailing uh, communal labor. Turns out... Tur turns out uh, our primary sources are generally unconcerned with that. It should so shock nobody, but it's worth acknowledging. Alright, so they don't have one super nearby. They may have one a little bit more outside of town. Which would be completely understandable and not at all surprising. Um, let's follow the road out here and see where it leads us. A little bit more outside of town. Like maybe, uh, oh, that's, that's too close to the water. That's way too close to the water for an awful pit. Oh, for God's sake. Thank you. Boing. Alright, but there are baths out here. So. Do whatever you will with that info. Exactly. Right, Beatrice needs to learn how to spin, but you don't have time with the new baby, so you'll have her hang out with the neighbor. Uh, exactly. That's super common. And so the sort of, kind of network of care, I think, is a good generalized way. I guess you could throw it in there, but... Where's the river from here? Yeah, okay, that's okay. Um, it seems a little bit close for a cesspit for me, but yeah, not too bad. Yeah, there is a little bit of just, you know, everyone does it or everyone dies, so... Alright, that's the armorer. That's not helpful. Where's the inn? Literally, where the inn should be along a main road here. I guess maybe it's closer to this? Indeed. Huh. I know you. I know you from somewhere. Hmm. Where do I know you from? What? Of course, my 
Big partner vibes. Tell me I'll bite. I'll bite. Yes, that dream has come true. I dreamt that a young man would become my apprentice. My own pupil in the trade of milking. And that's supposed to be me. If you're fucking oh, well. so damn unfucking good, What's I your name, young man? You're to become my apprentice. Um who first tell me who are you? Who and what why? Do do? Me? I am an unworthy, low and miserable servant of Providence. God or merchant, believer or heathen. I wander the world without home or family, with only my wagon offering miracles he, to those that need He did it. Without home or kin, I wander this world with my wagon, Come right up. providing the miracles to the people in need. Aromatic herbs, rare poisons. Why would you phrase any of that as opening the door to you being a heretic? Uh, look, so, here's the deal, chat. <laughs> this is a real, like, type of person in the late Middle Ages, right? There are absolutely people wandering around that sell an assortment of stuff. Um, both stuff that's supposed to have occult properties, uh, fragments of relics, whatever, right? Uh, the Canterbury Tales makes fun of one of these people, right? The character of the partner is a semi-itinerant, like, pseudo-cleric who travels around buying and selling in the occult and the miraculous. That being said, the idea that he would open the door to, uh, like, uh, in ambiguity whether he is a believer or a heretic is insanity. At the most, you'd have someone who would self-present, uh, depending on the community he's in, as being Protestant or not. Well, I guess Hussite or not. But, um... Yeah. She, uh, someone, this character would 100% say that what they're doing is in ordinance with Providence, that they are a true believer of whatever community they're in, um, and that they incredibly well vet all of these finger bones who are definitely from the people they say and were not grave robbed. <sighs> God, like, it is a hustle, uh, but, God, the, the fact that it's like, oh, I'm not, not drinking, I'm 100% exactly not. What does it entail, becoming your apprentice? Your lot of work and strenuous labor, knowledge of medicine, right theology. All right, all right. You have to study the great works of the ancients and devote your time. I'm illiterate. That sounds demanding. That's a pretty challenging task. That's why God has sent you. What is it? Um, no. Our Lord sent no, I definitely don't want to be your apprentice. A shame. Come and get it, but perhaps Providence shall I lost reputation for not buying into a Charlotte. You'll see. Can I, can I change my mind? Uh, his name's, he's literally just called a Charlotte. The Jenna, uh, thank you for the follow just now. First things first, I need to find an inn. Where is the inn? Where is the inn? Like, Henry's about to fall asleep on his feet if we don't locate an inn. 
So, where is it? Isn't this guy the Pirate Master from Dark Souls? His outfit looks identical. His outfit does look identical. Well, look, we lost reputation for not being willing to do a heresy sermon last time, so... You're not wrong. I wish you hadn't reminded me of that. I sincerely, deeply wish you had not reminded me of that. The pillory? Well, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for an inn. But it's just a random ass house, isn't it? Dang it. Seriously, where is this inn? There should be one in this town. Oh, it's probably down here, isn't it? Huh? Unexplored place, unexplored place, unexplored place. Quest giver, unexplored place. Okay, it's definitely down this way. From the yard or from the woods, rain and battle pour. Considering who Henry is, I'm surprised we haven't discovered the pillar. We've only, we only just discovered this pillory, Magistrissa. See, we only just got here. There was plenty other towns. Who knows? God. The fact that this game has, like, 2010's, um... I can only run for 32 seconds syndrome is real frustrating. The baths? That's closer. I wonder if that's the end over there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fif fifteen seconds, and we're out of energy. Chat! Chat, uh, raise your hand if you, like Henry, are so out of shape that 15... Shit, Henry! Henry! Here! Congratulations, you two. Uh, I'm taking a nap first. I can't deal with this shit right now. Logics! Thank... God. Hi. Yes. Indeed. Place to sleep. Hi. There's room here. Just, just one night. Just the one night. Sure. Let's see your coin first. These are hard. I have like eight hundred coin. But sure. Two, two groschen. A fucking expensive. Are there any problems around here I might be able to help with? Nothing I think about. Thank the good Lord. It's quiet here. Great. So, I have rooms upstairs? This is my room? Where's my room? Is it in here? No. It is upstairs. Upstairs. Let's go. Fine. Sir Which room did I rent? I guess this one. Go to bed. Hail hydrate. God. Uh, we're going to sleep for... Oh. Never mind. We're not going to sleep. We're going to... We're going to stand here for... Uh... Dubious number of hours, and it's going to be like, wow, you're, uh, you're real tired. And then we're going to immediately go to sleep for another 12 hours, and that should fix all of our problems. Gameplay. Yes, yes, I know you're tired. Sleep. Oh, my word. Yes, 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 yes. For oh, 11 hours. Oh God. And then we'll be fine. 
kind of need to lie down before I split my face open from you. And you're back for one question, there are several. Incredible, welcome back. Uh, let's see if I can help. No guarantees, because I am not an infinite source of knowledge, but at least I have good so You're wondering about the saga. I can probably help. Never mind. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I was about to say no promises, but no, I'm pretty comfortable on that topic. Alright. Take number next. Let's see what our friends from Scarlet's Owl have to say for themselves. Where'd they go? How come we're so charmed by the Book of Hours time mechanic in Pentiment, but here it just fills me with disappointment? Because the Book of Hours time mechanic does something. Magistrissa, that's... Uh, don't worry about it. Nothing bad happened to us. We're fine. Uh, right, there aren't a ton of blocked doors um, in the historical period, TBH. Like, locks... There's There are locks, but not everything has them, and it's fine. Um, but yeah, right, I think the big difference in the time mechanics, and that's a super interesting one, is right, both of these thing, both of these communities are probably, not definitely, but probably, based in, or structured around monastic time. Yeah! Alright, Leonhard, I'll get to that in just a moment. I know exactly which saga you're talking about. Um, Baurarsa Snipe Outsells. For the Icelandic name. But, the place I've been trying to get to for like several weeks. Shh, don't worry about it, Polywagi. No one in this game worried about it, so why should we? The place we've been trying to get to for ages is. Right here. Saws of a monastery. Saws of a cloister. I mean, this is, you know, a super important place. Um, on a cliff above one of the many meanders of the Saws of a river, which isolates it on various sides. To the first half of the 11th century, when it was founded by Duke Ulderich at the instigation of the monk Procopius. St. Procopius became renowned particularly for wanting to preserve Old Church Slavonic religious rites rather than adopting the Latin liturgy. According to the oldest document mentioning the construction and development of the monastery, the Vita Maior, the life of St. Procopius, he initially lived in a cave for building a church consecrated to the Virgin Mary. Uh, the monastery of the Slavonic brothers imitated the design of the Abbot Abbey of St. Gall in Switzerland. The main building is the church with an adjoining wooded clo cloister. The original dwelling uh, of the abbey is located on the western side of the courtyard, and all of this is basically coming straight from the uh, uh, coming straight from the excavation or from the current layout of the monastery and its space. Uh, after the expulsion of all church Slavonic monks from Sazava, it was taken over by the Latinist monks from Brevnov in Prague. Uh, Abbot Diethardt continued with the rebuilding works, completing a single nave church in his lifetime from the 12th century. And then we get a very standard cloister style. Sure, um, the Icelandic written down, give me just a sec, because I need to switch over to my Icelandic keyboard, uh, but I can absolutely uh, do that for you. There you go. Anyway, right, this should be the dominant space um, in a religious context, and certainly for the surrounding town, in the game. Now, what do you think the odds are, even though, you know, the roof's not on? Here's a fun and exciting question. What do you think the odds are that we uh, actually are going to hear church bells? Yeah, yeah, I'm in a private area. 
I just want to have devotion. What? Please hold. Um... Isn't that... Isn't that... That super is. Um... Where... Is... I want the actual citation for this one. Dang it. All right, uh, I'm trying to locate the exact reference because that is a historical piece. Um, but given that it's a historical piece, I'm 98% confident. Well, actually, eh. Uh, I'll be curious to see if this one has its source an actual source of where it's from attached to it. Um, this is a wood panel icon from the. I'm pretty sure it's from the Byzantine Empire. Like, I'm not a hundred percent confident, but that's like, I'm like ninety percent confident. Um, that that's a Byzantine icon. Not a Catholic one. Hmm. Let's see if I can find a good one. Uh... Jeez, number of like problems of modern icon using modern iconography. Okay, here's literally like a Byzantine rush. It's the same. Yeah. Okay. Annoyingly, this doesn't have a source on where it's actually from. But you can tell. Shh, my computer's having troubles. My compute. My computer's having the time. Okay. Um, it's like that, I need to take it in to get it fixed. But, um, you can clearly see, right, that is... Shh. Sorry. Sorry. You heard nothing. No one heard anything. Okay. Sneak. You assumed the sound was a peasant in-game using a lawnmower. Yeah! Yeah. But yeah, there it is. Um, straight off of eBay. A print of a Byzantine icon of Christ. Yeah, of course, if you can find the actual citation of it, uh, that would be awesome. But yeah, it's, it's not... I suppose that's trying to say, oh yes, look at how it's still Slavonic, but, um... No. My opinion on that is no. Is that... It is, it is an icon of Jesus Christ Pantocrator, it's just there's a lot of icons of Jesus Pan, uh, Pantocrator, right? That's a genre of icon, not a specific one, um, of the, the like, very modern portraity style of Christ. So, yeah. Also, this is a tap, hang on, um, that's Francis of Assisi, isn't it? Isn't that St. Francis with the geese? Or no, it's Marta de Tour, you're right. 
you're correct. That is that is Margin of Tor. Um Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on the um that it's much more likely Saint Martin. Irritatingly, uh, my Google searches are failing me today. Um, let's see. Saint Martin, um, he's ready. Cause I'm. This is another one that I'm pretty sure is coming out of a, like a specific scene that's not a tapestry, but I'm not having any luck finding it. And um, before my computer decides trying to search Google is going to cause it to fly away, we'll get back into the game. But yeah, no, that is... What are you doing in a place founded by St. Procopius? Because that's a 13th century... This is 13th century manuscript art, I'm pretty sure, uh, that is then being put into a tapestry on a wall, because you got to fill it with something. Oh, sorry, sir. Is someone... God, the incidental dialogue of these, like, random, non-interactable townsfolk is insane. Hmm, is someone there? Well, I stand and look at you. Can Are I you okay, buddy? Mostly? What's got into you, boy? The grounds inside the monastery belong to the monks of the Order of Saint Benedict. What if I become a monk of Saint Benedict? Oh. Fair enough. What if I became a monk though? It is speeding up. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. We well, can supply you with a few more blankets, but not many. Look at them. Look at the state they're in. Wow. It's not having a good time. You think the Pantocrator is the one from St. Catherine's Monastery in Sinai? Look, we're doing the best we can. And this kind of accident is healthy. I bid you good day. Mm-hmm. You hunker? Henry? I'm glad to see you. Me too. I heard that you're doing well. That that well, sounds right. That depends. You're alive. So you're doing well. Um, fair. What's happening to you? Oh my god. Philip and they're all Yes. Where do you think the wounded ended up? Actually uh, I have no idea. Well, now you know. Me and Nicodemus have been trying to keep things up. You love her outfit? I love her outfit too. Her outfit is the That's best outfit in this game by a significant margin thus far. Um, can I help at all? Certainly. You can always use an extra pair of hands here. And it's been like that since the beginning. Sorry. I was in a bad way myself back then. They took me to Ratai unconscious and I needed a healer. Hmm. How is everyone holding up? Mm -hmm. What can I do? Holding up. People here are dying, usually needlessly, and I can't do anything about it. We don't have enough food or space or anyone who's willing to help us. Chat, can we get a spin? Doesn't anyone help you with nursing these people? You've got scholars all around you. It really, <laughs> really helps the emotional resonance of this scene, doesn't it? Nicodemus is trying, but everything he knows is from his book. Can I have a look at them myself? I know a little about healing. Do you now? And what would you do if you burnt yourself at the forge? First, you have to cool it down with water. Marigold doesn't help, and it's better if you don't bind it. It just sums up this game so well, doesn't it? You do know Is the guy behind her walking in circles? Yep. Looks like blacksmiths know about more than just pulling teeth. Pulling teeth? Nothing to it. As long as you don't squeeze the pincers too hard and crush them. Well... He's making the noise, yeah. Just don't go pulling anyone's teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't the monastery care for them? 
Oh dear. Uh, that unfortunately is the the they're talking about actually things that are pretty good. Um, both the idea the actual late medieval treatments of the marigold ointment, um, and the idea that monasteries despite having an obligation to take in the needy, um, not necessarily being super enthusiastic about it. Right, that actually is all checking out. It's just completely ruined by the guy just attempting to drill a hole into the center of the earth by walking in circles. Do you have enough food? Enough to survive, maybe. But convalescents need feeding up. Maybe if I brought some meat, some game, that would strengthen them up. Uh, that's poaching. Would be a great help. Are we going to poaching be poaching Sasao's um? Are we going to be poaching Sasao's forest? We're going to be poaching in Sasao's forest. Anything else you need? Look around. Yeah. Uh, well, it is a little crowded. Crowded? I've had to leave some of the sick lying in the open air, even at night. Mm -hmm. And have you seen what they're lying on? Mm. I'll try to negotiate better conditions with the monastery. I tried that, mm -hmm. out loud. They just nod their heads, but don't move a muscle. Uh huh. Better conditions. Very well. Why is there? He's here because of me. Oh, good. He found. He figured out what he was doing. Yes. There was one time I just had enough of it all, of the way they treat us, and I almost slapped one of. But that doesn't matter. Oh dear. And how are you doing? You're the only woman speak. here. Speak. Exactly. <laughs> Some of the monks speak to me. But other people act like I don't exist. Too bad the custodian isn't one of those. The, the custodian? The <laughs> All the time. Apparently he has a wife somewhere, but that doesn't stop him. He's constantly strutting around in front of me. And, um, what else? What do you mean, what else? He's invited me to his home. I could do something about it, if, if you like. No, I can deal with him. The last time uh -huh. I was you going around threatening people. It won't help me, and it definitely won't help the rest of you. Yeah. What can you tell me about the custodian? He's supposed to be in charge mm -hmm. of the guards and the security of the monastery. But really, he has a say in pretty much uh -huh. everything, including supply. Mm -hmm. And that's why he probably thinks he can do whatever he wants. Right. All right, that's all I need to know. Look, Henry... I know I can speak harshly, Aww. but I'm at the end of my tether. Last week, Bohoslav died. Maybe you knew him. And nobody even blinked an eye. We desperately need help. I'll yeah. do whatever's in my power. Aww. <laughs> Sir, did you enjoy your spin? We And Caritas. The term charity was understood as good works to one's brethren. Christian iconography depicts charity as a pelican feeding its young with... Sometimes, yes. Society, inspired by the teaching of the church and Old Testament stories, showed compassion by alms, free medical aid, food and wine to the poor travelers, sometimes even to the exiled. It was deemed that such acts of mercy secured salvation and a place in heaven, and were more about formally securing indulgences rather than being spontaneous acts of mercy. The church often founded hospitals, hostels, and hospices to look on pardons to prisoners. So, um, right, the, uh, this is another case where it's not wrong, right? The, the encyclopedia entries in this aren't wrong, they're just not necessarily quite right. Um, right, so the pelican is the embodiment of caritas, it's also the embodiment of Christ. Right, it's one of the Christological animals of medieval bestiaries. So saying it's just that Cari like the idea is the pelican feeding the young with its own blood um, is the embodiment of charity. No, it's the embodiment of Christ's virtue of charity. Um, Caritas should also, I think there's room to be more, um, more elaborate here. Because uh, Caritas should also be translated as love. Uh, right, the idea of brotherly love. 
the best part of this entry is the idea that it's a kind of systematized charity. I don't... I'm suspicious of this part, uh, right? It was deemed that such acts of mercy secured salvation and a place in heaven. That's good. And we're more about formally securing indulgences rather than being spontaneous acts of mercy. That's not good. Um, right? It's not spontaneous because it is part of an ethical framework uh, of medieval Catholic and Christian theology. The idea that it is about securing indulgences so they can go off and sin in other ways, right? The preemptive forgiveness of sins of the purchased indulgences, that's the part that rings me as suspicious because that's a very materialistic kind of selfish way of reading it rather than the idea that systematized care is itself good and valuable. Right, that's the part of it that is suspicious, and that's the one that's instructive to me. It's these really small interpretive things in these entries that always bug me. Though I'll... I'll right, so, similarly, like with this quest design, right, the idea that with this quest, the refugees are tolerated, right, are only being barely tolerated, that's fine. But the idea that they would, that, um, the monastic brothers at all are not giving alms due to the selfishness uh, and hoardiness of the uh, custodian and, uh, you know, um, using that as coercion for sexual assault. Uh, and abuse of power dynamics. It, did ha it could happen. But that wasn't the only state of existence, and the fact that that's the only relationship that's really ex like presented or explored in the game, to me, is indicative of the game's like broader like disinterest in having the most interesting or displaying the widest possible array of um, medieval, I guess, diversity of thought, right? It's just, uh, it's a little bit mean, right? The, ga the game tends to portray it all as just, just a little bit, a little bit mean, in addition to What? Oh Christ, that's worse than I thought it was. Alright, we're gonna have to end stream pretty soon because of how bad this is. Um, my headphones were muting just how bad it was. Um, but the most common medieval disease is the plague, no? 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 Whooping cough, cholera, influenza, malaria, tuberculosis, typhus, leprosy, anthrax, and diphtheria. Tuberculosis is one of the most common diseases. Um, great risk then from commonplace mold, uh, birth, parasites, bladder problems, kidney stones, hernias, fractures, cataracts, poor teeth, etc. Diseases due to poor hygiene, natural disasters, crop failures, famine, cold humidity, wars, and animal-borne contagion. All of that's all of that's true. It's fine enough. The only thing that's wrong is equating most common with most famous. Like the Black Death is certain, or the Second Plague pandemic, certainly the most famous disease outbreak. But calling it the most common, I don't think is a true sentence. Uh, yeah, it's just the fans a bit offset. Uh, I need to get it taken in and fixed, uh, but yeah, it's being worse than usual. So, we still, however, have found a new place, so if we come back to this game, right, we have a job, and it is actually helping people and doing stuff. So, um, on that note, we might actually call it a day because I'm getting worried about how loud the computer thing is. That's a bit of an oof. So, um, that's a bit unlucky, but... That's okay. Um, we're going to call stream here, uh, as we're coming up on just over three hours anyway. So, I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, make sure you drop and leave a, drop a follow, because um, we'll be back later in the week with more options. Um, we'll try and get this taken care of before then, because oh boy. Um, oh boy. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, I had a lot of fun with this. I think it sums it up pretty well, right? To say that this game is just a little bit mean. It's not bad, right? It's not, like, fundamentally, um, 
like making stuff up. Uh, a lot of his encyclopedia entries are like 90% of the way right, um, but it is a little bit just mean about it. Uh, so when it's a little bit too materialistic, a little bit too self-centered, and that reflects the gameplay as well. Uh, and then after after Pentiment, it's like a lot of the things that are fun about Pentiment are boring about us, uh, or, or boring about this game. Right, the things Pentiment is good at that are exactly the places that this game is bad at. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, we'll probably stream this like sporadically more. Um, str I'll figure out the schedule in the next couple days. It'll be here. It'll be on Discord. Speaking of which, if you're not on the Discord yet, you should, because uh, we get to talk about all sorts of fun stuff in there. But yeah, uh, that's bad. Uh, we'll figure that out. Anyway, before my computer decides to light on fire, uh, I'm going to call it here. So thank you all for tuning in. Until next time I see you all, uh, have a good rest of your afternoons. Stay warm, stay safe, happy spring, all that stuff. All right. Bye-bye.